2009, there we were, we were going to have uh, midterm elections, and uh, and at the time uh, we we had a company where we were we had an SMS gateway, uh, and we were we were doing a lot of stuff in terms of marketing. People were sending a lot of messages from movie theaters and all that, and we figured out if it, if it was possible uh, for us to create to use the tools that we were already using for CD stuff. So um, at the time, uh, we used to Shahidi, uh, which was very new back in 2009. Uh, there were a lot of case studies there, and we adapted to the Mexican context, and we connected it to the SMS gateway. Um, after all the results that we have, all the results that we had at the, at the time, uh, we identified um, that the tool was awesome to leave a testimony and to put stuff on a map, but it was difficult for us to actually turn those reports into uh, actionable information. So that's why we created the offer. And I'm going to tell you the story. So first of all, um, when, at the time, we, con we connected two very distinctive Mexican symbols. The Mexican luchador, which is our superhero, and uh, these kind of uh, skulls and these crazy psychedelic colors that the Aztecs used to have in all their paintings. So if you combine those two, then you have with almost a lot. Um, uh, it was, as I, as I told you, um, we tried to keep it very fresh. It was this, this was targeted for uh, university students, for young people, and it was very new at the time. Um, this was the platform. As you can see, uh, this is no longer available on the web, but as you can see, it, just, it was an Shahidi instance. It has different institutions that were part of it. Um, so what we did at the time is, first of all, we created the platform, and then we went to the NGOs. We we knew that we weren't we that we weren't experts in terms of election tracking and election monitoring. So we went to the NGOs and uh, we told them, hey, we have this platform for you, so you can start uh, all the work that you're already doing in terms of election monitoring. Why don't you use, use the platform? And there were a lot of uh, of uh, they didn't trust us at the beginning because we were university students and they would, and they said, they would say like, why are we doing this for free? Why are we providing this kind of technology? What, what would be the outcome of those kind of, of technologies? So, um, but once they, they, they identified the, the value of this kind of tool, and there were different organizations, there were around 12 organizations, but they all had the same objective. The same objective was to protect the Mexican voters. So we were able to put them all together into the same platform. Because although they have different strategies, different different funding schemes, they all have the same objective, which is Mexico. Well, at the time it was Mexico. So the one technology was able to put them all together and to track all the elections at, uh, um, and for, to receive all the information in one single platform. Uh, first, our strategy at the time, uh, we 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 have one hundred dollars for 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 all our technology for every all the projects. So. It was practically uh, a, a non-profit project. So first of all, what we did is we identified and engaged local bloggers, local activists, journalists, and influencers, so we can so we could get into the mainstream media. We get TV interviews, radio interviews, newspaper interviews for free, and they were giving us a lot of a lot of taste. Then we also we use our own blogs and our Twitter uh, account to build uh, and maintain some momentum. So people start using the hashtag with almost el voto, which at the time, 2009, Twitter wasn't a very big deal in Mexico. And, um, uh, and then we also created uh, widgets, badges, iframes, luchador, luchador masks that we gave away, uh, so people could integrate this platform into their own, into their own um, so they can become part of the project and so they can, and they can integrate it into their own, into their own platform. So, um, Twitter to, to, to get into the mainstream media, uh, the, our team blogging, to, uh, trying to get to influencers to get higher coverage, and the iFriends to have symbiotic integration with main, news, main, main websites. So this one here is the number one website in Mexico, it's, it's a newspaper, and uh, they had our map in their main, in their main website during the election day. Uh, so some of the product of the Problem that we were tracking was alteration of polls, falsification of results, poll violence. Um, we have a video 
and we started receiving we started receiving information. Uh, there were two kinds of information, as I told you. One were for for the official official observers that we tried to engage at the very beginning, uh, and they had an, a known NGO team that were that was validating the all the information and making it public in the map. And there were citizen reports uh, that we were trying to validate by ourselves. Uh, it was very difficult. We were an experts, but we learned a lot from that. And uh, so we created with this map that could uh, you could track Mexican selections in real time back in 2009. We get uh, videos. Uh, we have video of a priest saying that it, that if you didn't vote for a particular party, you're committing a sin. Um, we have uh, pictures of these jalapeno jalapeno pickles with a, with the party on it. Um, this is a true. This is a real report. Uh, and we get it like two hours before the media uh, received it. Uh, one candidate stopped another candidate in the polling station. Uh, we, we, we didn't make it public because it was very difficult to, to validate our information. It was a very tired play. But at the end, um, uh, the, the media started making it public. And it, it did happen. What we, what we learned there, uh, in that, in that, with that exercise, is that citizens, we want to participate. We don't have, sometimes we don't have the tools, of, sometimes we don't have the incentives. Um, so we, cre we created this very cool campaign that it was cool to participate, to become a luchador, to protect your own country and your own election. Um, we are, being a citizen should not be a, a passive function, and we, should, we need to try to create tools, these kind of tools need to try to get citizens uh, to, to spread the word and to get seats, new generations understanding democracy beyond voting every once in a while and also engaging in the process. Uh, um, the technology, on the technology side, what happened in 2009, we already received the reports, we validated the reports and we put it on a map, we, we, we watched it, which was a great breakthrough at the time. Um, but then the project, uh, we had a, a little spin-off in three, three or four months later, the Mexican government uh, proposed a 3% tax on the internet uh, in late 2009. So we created this movement called Internet Necessario, which means Internet is a necessity. Uh, because there was a reporter that interviewed uh, uh, a, a congressman, and, and this reporter was telling, what do you think about people that say Internet is a necessity, and you're, you're taxing the internet? And he replied, Internet is only a necessity to, a necessity to watch porn. And so we created this. So we created this protest around around Twitter with hashtag Internet Necessario, and we started asking people to tell us with this hashtag why Internet is a necessity to them. And then we return, we turned all those all those uh, reports into uh, a daily email that was forwarded to all representatives, congressmen and women in Mexico. Um, when a, when another reporter asked a, a, a senator, "What do you think about about the protest on Twitter?" And she said, "I don't have a Twitter account because I do have a job." So this, that kind of that kind of thing really really showed the disconnection between uh, the politicians and, 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 and citizens. And within a stage on the on the internet, there was a protest, uh, and finally we ended up at the Senate uh, discussing the initiative, and it didn't pass. So that's when we realized that uh, technology can really have an impact in 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 our daily lives. And uh, that, uh, and that we needed to create tools for act, uh, going back, going to the final consequences, to actually providing the feedback loop, and that's what we created CityBot. But then, what happened in, in 2012? In 2009, as I told you, this was midterm elections. But last year we had the presidential elections, and we wanted to go a little bit further to what we already had uh, in 2009. We have, uh, we had a lot of experience to all the projects that we've been doing since then in, in other countries. And we tried to go to the official Mexican government, and this is what we found. This is, this is, this is the real office of the director of the Innovation uh, Department of Mexico City. Uh, so what, what we find is that there is, there is really a, a, a deficit in agility, in innovation, and the, the capacity of our institutions. And through technology, perhaps we could help. With Pidemos El Voto, which our last project, we had the crowd. We have some kind of verification, but we didn't have the response. In 2012, we were focusing on having the response. Uh, this is how the government is doing analytics uh, in many countries, not only in Mexico. 
This is how they are managing reports, and this is how they are doing real-time mapping. Um, so, as I, as I told you, um, well, what we did is, what we did, we, we identified, uh, we have, there, there's, a big, there's a big problem, we have 21st century citizens trying to communicate with 20th century institutions, and these institutions are not, they are not talking to us, they are talking in a different way. Um, citizens in the 21st century, we don't longer think in hierarchies, we're thinking in networks. And our governments, they still think, they, uh, as, our, as, as soon as, while the governments, they don't see themselves as known within, within these networks, they will, we will not have a direct conversation with them. So this was a new site. This was, uh, the, bad, the bad thing is that uh, they didn't let us keep on the luchador logo. They said, you want to go with institutions, you have to follow institutional market. So we, 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 we were unable to, to, to continue using our luchador. Um, this was a project funded by the UNDP, and the UNDP said, we were feeling weird about funding something without each other on it. So, but at the end, um, uh, we, we, uh, we, we, it was the same strategy. We had uh, all the civil society organizations with their own methodology reporting to the same platform. Each of those, each of them has the, had their own uh, admin access to the, the backend that I already showed you before, uh, where they could see all the reports, they could very, very validate and verify their own reports. We also had citizen reports uh, there was there were TV TV advertising, radio advertising, a lot. There was a lot of advertising, and there was a, a team of around 50 people, which were there, uh, validating all the information during the entire the entire day. Uh, we received around um, we received around 60,000 reports, and this this is, this is what happened. So we we sat together with the IFE and the PEPADE, which are the official institutions in Mexico that receive. Uh, citizen reports, election election complaints, and citizen reports, and we said together with the UNDP, we said, okay, we need to connect our platform with yours in real in real time, so you receive the reports, and so we need you to provide an API, an, an API for us. And these guys, the the, the technological the, the tech team of the of the of these institutions, said, okay, give us a couple of days to we figure out the API. They came back two days later, and they said, we have no idea what an API is. So please just send us an email every two hours uh, with all the reports that you that you receive. So we started sending an email every two hours to them. Uh, we, we were putting, putting all the reports together in an Excel file, and we sent in all, the, all, all, the, all the emails. In Mexico, elections go from Sunday at 8 a.m. to Sunday at 6 p.m. So every two hours, we started sending uh, all, the, all the reports. At 2 p.m., we started receiving a mail from them, or an automatic mail, mail from them that in inbox is full. Uh, it was until Wednesday that they appeared in a in a mail that says something about uh, reports at hotmail.com and said, "Hey, please send us all the information to this to this uh, to this email." We did. Then they said, "There's a lot of reports here. Can you please uh, can you please put uh, Excel files of 100 reports per, per Excel file?" We did, uh, and then. Four weeks later, the UNDP and us, we sat together with them and said, okay, of all the reports that you, that you, that you sent us, they said this, 93% um, we cannot solve them because you didn't send this to us in real time. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the rest, so of all the reports that we received, only 700 were officially prosecuted. But at least 700 were, were officially prosecuted. Um, there was also another, another part of the project Together with the NDI, uh, we, had, we, we were very worried that in the north of Mexico, people were not going to participate in the elections because there's a lot of violence and there's a lot of fear uh, that you don't vote for the candidate that the drug dealers are supporting. Uh, so we created this platform, which is open source, is based on Ruby on Rails, um, to crowdsource and to get, try to get people uh, to complement with your project and try to get people involved also in the in the in all the process, not only in, during the election day. Um, I think crowdsourcing is a it's a it's a very good tool, but sometimes in, you, you you need to focus it a little bit because if not, you start receiving a lot of uh, weird things. But it depends of, uh, on three on three on three things. It depends on a, on a, on a efficient organization. Uh, which well, what, that's why we work with the UNDP and the UNDI and the NDI. Uh, knowledge of the people. That's why we work with local organizations that they already know what they're doing, and trying to add value 
to all the to all the, the information that you were getting. So all the process was, was there were there were four steps from this. The first one was uh, give your opinion. So as I told you, we focused crowdsourcing a little bit. It, we, we didn't just tell them tell us whatever you want. We tell them uh, Ciudad Juarez in the north of Mexico uh, would be safer if compared to free. So people participated in a much more practical way. And this this can this kind of the this, these are kind of the uh, the, 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 the words that are more common, uh, of harness judges, if, if, uh, a tool for justice, um, education, that kind of stuff. So we try, we identify what were the real concerns of people in that in that particular place. We were trying to create a tool not for the citizens, but with the citizens. Um, then the, the second part was uh, to uh, to ask questions. To the, to, the, to the candidates. Ask any question you want, and then people start voting on the questions and the top 10 questions. The candidate would go on YouTube and respond to each of the questions uh, the citizen wanted. And the fourth part is uh, to try to follow up what they, what they did. These were, uh, in these particular areas, were uh, Congress candidates. Uh, so we integrated with a tool for Congress Transparency and Interaction. Here in Tunisia, you have uh, a tool like that. It's called marasat.tn. Um, where you can actually follow up on their on the on their work and comment and all that. Uh, also in, in, in um, previously, I talked about Ukraine. Uh, they they launched uh, a viral video about zombies, uh, also to get people to participate. Uh, this this was a video that they created. There were zombies walking around the city, and uh, um, I don't know why it says it, but something about voting of you become a zombie, but. Uh, they, that, that was the main idea to be to be kind of to get people to participate and to engage in, in, the, in the election process. Uh, but, but we have this this, this all the, all what you're hearing today is just tools. It's just tools that uh, give the, give us a chance to reframe and rejuvenate our institutions. We need them. Uh, power structures are changing, and we have this huge opportunity now. If you if you only have to just just to close. If you only have to uh, um, take someone something from what I just what I've, what I've said, um, the, be, the the lesson that we learn is first of all um, identify real needs. Don't assume that uh, what what our, our needs are also uh, uh, citizens' needs. Um, be clear and transmit just one call to action. If we go to this website where there's a lot of stuff going on, people with uh, we get lost and we will not participate. Um, it's very difficult to make something that uh, it's easy to use. Not only nice to nice, it, it should not look nice, but it should be easy to use. Citizens don't need to understand all the complexity that is behind that, because as I told you, we cannot separate civic life with social life. And most citizens, they don't, they only want their problem being solved and not to be completely aware of the process. And. Uh, one very, one very important thing that, that, that we do all the time is iteration. Start small, test, validate, fail, iterate. And once again, the problem. Iteration reduces risks, and it, it, it makes failures look small uh, and turn them into lessons. And finally, um, we all share the same objectives. So um, so perhaps there's, there, can, there can be a way where when either they have different strategies or different funding or different methodologies, but at the end, these kind of tools can help and make our message uh, much more powerful. Thank you.